welcome back my friends thank you so much for tuning in this is silver slayer so now let's talk silver watching content on youtube can be extremely dangerous you never want to watch someone that only tweaks information to run with their narrative if the precious metals markets aren't always rainbows and unicorns, I'm not going to tweak the information that way. I'm going to show articles that talk about silver hanging on by its fingernails. I'm going to show articles where it's looking like silver might be declining for the time being. And anyone who doesn't do that, that isn't transparent, is misleading and, and basically just, it's just, it's not right in my opinion. Yes, silver is always the best investment. Yes, it's very safe. It's called a safe haven asset. At least they're putting fake money into real money. But if I was just to sit here and and as I'm searching through articles every day, just skip out the articles that talks about silver possibly, you know, having a correction or no, that's not right. And you have to be very careful watching channels consuming content that does that. Pumpers, silver pumpers even. Silver's going to explode next week. No, it's not. It's not going to explode next month either. Not even next year. And if you're investing, as it's the case, that's very dangerous because that means you're probably overspending. That's, that means you're investing off of fear, off of emotion, and not rationally. That impending doom. Now, yes, it could happen a lot sooner than I say, which is the year 2025, 2026. But if I'm not going to sit here and set unrealistic expectations or mislead or give false hope to someone, especially since I have an audience, to, to someone as they're investing as silver's always about to explode tomorrow, so I better hurry up, hurry up, buy it, sending, spending 75% of my paycheck. Because that's the content I was watching when I first started, and that was extremely dangerous until I realized, you know what? It's not the case, and I'm not going to portray that is, that is the case. I'm going to be real with you. A person that would see this article and not cover it because it's not fitting with their narrative is, is not a good channel to watch. The only post the, 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 the article or the analyst that's very bullish on silver but won't listen to, won't even listen to the analyst that's bearish. And that's, that's closed-mindedness. Because if you won't even listen to someone who's posing their case because it, w without even hearing what they have to say, you're just cutting them off saying, nope, I don't want to hear you because you're saying that silver could be bearish, that's very bad. That's very bad. You have to listen to both sides and make your own your, your own educated guess off that. You know, you, you can't just listen to people who are on your side. And that's why I think this article is going to be so good is because it doesn't just talk about the analysts that are bullish on silver, but it also shows the perspective of the analysts that are bearish on silver. So we're going to dig into both sides and not just listen to the one that we want to hear for our own egotistical uh, selves. I did want to cover the first article talking about silver hanging on by its fingernails just to, just to you know, get a little bit of perspective on why silver would be bearish. But I can guarantee the overall majority is bullish on silver over the next couple of years for obvious reasons do remember that i am doing a massive giveaway if you want to win some silver several giveaways as we approach 100,000 subscribers so just make sure you click subscribe turn the bell on so you don't miss the entry videos so now let's talk silver Silver has fallen rather significantly during the trading session only to turn around and show signs of life. And by doing so, the market looks as if it is going to continue to see a lot of noisy behavior. And therefore, if we do rally from here, it would not surprise me. However, I can just say the same thing about a breakdown below the bottom of the candlestick. And that's, that's what I'm glad that they, they came on both sides. They said it looks like... Remember, it looks like there could be a breakdown below the bottom of the candlestick, but it also looks like we could see a lot of noisy behavior leading to a rally. They're not keeping some information out to fit their own narrative. 
If we do rally from here, then I think the $22 level could be an area that causes some noise. But then you have to deal with the $22.50 level, which shows a bit of resistance at this point. Breaking above that then opens up the possibility of a move to the daily 50 or the 50 daily EMA. Conversely, if the market was to break down below the candlestick for the trading session on, on Tuesday, we would see silver drop quite a bit. That being said, it's probably worth noting that silver has filled a gap in the futures market during the day and has bounced from the bottom of that gap. So in other words, we may see this market try to turn around based upon the technical analysis alone. I do think we're in a very important level for this market, which I also could agree with. So we will have to pay close attention to the next impulsive candlestick. The market has sold off quite drastically, so a short-term bounce does make a certain amount of sense. Whether or not it becomes something that's a bit more longer term will remain to be seen, but clearly we have enough volatility for something like that. And I'm glad that, you know, they weren't, they weren't over-exaggerating anything. They were giving very modest opinions based off statistics. And when they did give an opinion, it wasn't, you know, it, it was withdrawn. I really don't like when people try to, especially when they're assuming or throwing out a forecast or prediction, which are never right. And this is why I say that is forecasts, it's like the weatherman. Forecasts and predictions are always wrong or way off because we don't understand the unknown variables. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know all of the events leading into next year that are going to be happening that are drastically going to change the market. You know, when people throw out price forecasts or predictions, they're basing it as if everything is staying the same as it is right now. And yes, if that were to happen, their forecast or prediction would probably be accurate. They're not, they're not even thinking otherwise. They're, they're, they're acting like that's what's going to happen when if they just stepped outside of their own egotistical mind, they could see that, wow, a lot happens in one week. A lot happens in one month. Imagine how much is going to happen by the end of the year that is drastically going to change where we don't even understand what affect the market in a, in a better or worse place. Unknown variables is something no one ever incorporates. So now let's look at this article, Silver and Gold 2023. How heavy is this cow? I'm not going to, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information in this. So I'm just going to try to highlight the main stuff. Highlight the main stuff. Underpinning that vicious spike and plunge in precious metals, everyone now expects the U.S. Fed and other central banks to stop raising and start cutting their interest rate this year. Last Wednesday confirmed that view when private sector ADP payrolls company said January saw the weakest U.S. job growth in two years. But the same day then saw everyone ignore the hawkish comments repeated by Federal Chairman Jerome Powell after the U.S. Central Bank raised interest rates yet again. And that ignorance helped gold and silver touch fresh nine-month highs. But the Friday then reversed that move and much more when the official payrolls estimate from the Bureau of Labor Statistics said in the U.S. in fact added nearly three times as many jobs in January as the consensus among professional analysts had predicted. Because forecasts are useless, right? Well, maybe. And I'm, I'm glad that they were almost a little ironic about that since they are posting a forecast right now, but it could be. And when you go specifically off forecasts, betting all your money on the weatherman, you're, you're gambling. So here is the actual average price, and then that's the darker orange, and the lighter one is analyst forecast average. So, And this is for gold, by the way. So we're looking at gold's price. It's looking like... Um, uh, 2022, we saw it around 1800, 1700, 1800. 2021, obviously, we saw it break above 2000. That was the highest price gold's ever been. Um, and remember, that was the forecast where they're actually pretty close. Like, look at 2022, their forecast and average is spot on direct, directly. In 2020, 2013, you can see it's way off. They predicted gold to be almost 1500 or 
Oh wow. Okay, so I see what. Yeah, they predict the gold to be twenty. You know, almost sixteen hundred dollars when it was only around fourteen hundred, something along those lines. But they are pretty close. Silver's a lot different of a story since it's more volatile. The markets move a lot easier, and that's why J.P. Morgan manipulates the silver market and not the gold market. And that's why silver is so much more volatile because it's such a small market compared to gold. Um, but anyways, let's look at the, the question that's put another way, how heavy is this cow? That was a question asked of farmers, butchers, and other meat industry insiders bustling around the west of England, fat stock and poultry exhibition in Polymouth back in the summer of 1906. How much beef will the butcher get from, from this ox once he has killed it? So let's look at that. Now they're going off the average guess, and that would be, now they're going off actual percentages now to be kind of you know unironic that brings us to silver in 2023 seven times in the last 12 years the average gold forecast in the lbma competition has come around five percent or closer to the actual outcome so here are the silver forecast versus averages so you can see that 2022 they were predicting around $23 silver when it was around 21 ish now they're predicting 23 24 dollars it's hard to tell from a chart um so let's go into the actual numbers so uh let's look at this um 2023 will now see silver prices average nearly two dollars per ounce more than they did in 2022 according to new competition's average entry and what's odd is that the new average forecast almost matches the average forecast from 2022 very bearish outlook from a couple more but there's very bullish from others overall most analysts crowd around the 23 to 24 dollar level giving the average forecast of 23 dollars and 65 cents an ounce now it could be a lot higher I could definitely see 30 plus dollar silver by the end of the year. That's honestly what I'd bet on. I mean, we're only in February. It's February 17th. We're only two months into the year. Imagine how much could change in the next 10 months. A lot is going to change. So if anyone thinks that silver is only going to move 50 cents in the next 10 months, you're crazy especially given all of these circumstances. See, that is that that is something where, like I said in the beginning, I don't want to over-exaggerate or, or, you know, I, I want to play it safe, but to say that silver is, what is silver sitting at right now? To say that silver sitting at $21.74 and it could only top $23 in 10 months is insane. We've seen silver move several dollars within a, a couple of weeks. We saw silver move three, four dollars within a two week span. So in ten months, you're saying it's still only gonna sit at twenty three dollars given it all that's happening globally. I don't think you're really un um I think you're only looking at a few variables and not and not uh looking at the broader picture. And I think that's what a lot of people do, you know, the micro versus the macro and they're only looking at the price forecast from Specific things like the monetary side of things and not looking at maybe the supply deficit or the largest supply deficit this year and demand and all that stuff, I think, is what people kind of brush to the side. They just look at interest rates, the Federal Reserve, and base it off of that. But silver is bullish for a specific reason that they don't they do not detach from gold. And that's why their price forecasts are going to look almost identical. Yeah. So anyways. Uh, yeah, that's my take on this. Let me know what you think. Like I said, though, just take price forecasts with a grain of salt because it really doesn't matter, especially if they're just basing it off of one of the two variables that give silver so much opportunity beyond gold, beyond other investments and assets. So, yeah, I'm doing a giveaway. Make sure that you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the entry videos. May the luckiest stackers win. If you want to purchase silver, I, re I really do recommend buying from Miles Franklin. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. 
let him know I sent you. Andy would love to hear it. That's a great company, one of the most respected, over $8 billion in sales. They've been in business for 40-plus years, never had a negative complaint. Because even if they do mess up, which they have, they fix it. You know, so you're guaranteed to be cared for. And if you know Andy, if you've seen him anywhere, he's a very caring person. If you start buying, you know, consistently through them, you'll probably get to know him. And that's like buying, that's like having one of the, one of, if not the most influential person in the precious metals world, one of the biggest dealers as like your personal friend, which I think that's so cool that I can even offer that to. I mean, Andy has has expanded my life and career and channel in so many ways. I'm doing interviews with David Morgan. He's friends with Ted Butler. He's friends with, you know, Keith Newmeyer. He's friends with David Morgan. He's friends with Robert Kiyosaki. You know, he's getting interviewed on Kitco News by Michelle McCory. You know, he's the one that, you know, the Texas millionaire, that lady, or the billionaire, they bought $50 million worth of silver from him, and he covered that order in two days, something that nobody else in this world could pull off in probably two years, like $50 million worth. That's the guy right now. He's the guy. He's over everywhere, Kit Coe's, and, and, you know, that's the guy right now. And uh, it's crazy to me. It's still unrealistic. It, it, it blows my mind that, you know, we both, you know, are, we do a, a show every week together, and I, I just think it's cool that I'm able to offer you that opportunity. Miles Franklin is one of the only few companies that still works with the U.S. Mint. Since the U.S. Mint cut off everyone buying directly from them, you and I can't buy silver directly from them. You have to buy from another site. Andy Sheckman still can, held the highest standards, and um, I'm glad that I can offer you that business relationship. So, yeah, info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know I sent you. Make sure you subscribe if you want a chance to win some silver. And may the luckiest stackers win. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.